So now we understand the concepts of UVs, let's learn how they work in practice inside of Maya. Right now, I wanna hide everything that is not my serial box. A way I can do that is to select my object, go to Show, and go to Isolate Selected, and choose View Selected. This will hide all of the other objects in the scene, except for the object that I had selected. If I wanna bring them back, all I have to do is go back to Show, Isolate Selected, and uncheck View Selected. You'll see that Control-1 will also do this. So now I'm able to kind of focus on this object. So if I right click on this object and assign a new material and choose the AI standard surface material, our color is going to automatically just be a solid color. And for right now, that's okay. So let's open the UV editor now. We can find it in a couple of different places. One, under the modeling tab, we can find it under UV, UV Editor. We'll also be able to find it under Windows, Modeling Editor, UV Editor. When I click this, it's going to open up a couple of windows. And at first, it may be kind of hard to see what is going on. So, just to make this a little more clear, I'm going to click this button, and what this will do is shade the UV faces. And so now you can see that these are our UV faces. These tools are gonna to be really handy later, but for right now, I'm just going to kind of move those off to the side. Now, when we're talking about UVs, again, we're talking about our 3D object in a theoretical 2D space. So how could I cut this object up in the same way I did the candy box and lay it out flat. And what we're seeing here doesn't really make sense in terms of our 3D object. Part of that is because Maya is still thinking about this object as if it were just a standard primitive cube. So that's how I started modeling this object and Maya is still thinking of it that way. So if I move this over to the side so we can see our channel box, You'll see that I still have lots of history on here from how I made the object, and you'll see that all of my numbers are kind of messed up. So in order to really understand this object's UVs, we have to clean all of this up first. So the first thing we're gonna do, modify freeze transformations. And that will reset all of my translates, rotates, and scales. The second thing I'll do is edit, delete by type, and history. Now you wanna be careful to not accidentally delete all by type. There are some times you need to preserve an object's history, but right now I just wanna delete the selected object's history. Now Maya is going to think of this as a new object. So when I open the UV editor, it's a little hard to see exactly what's going on here. So to make this a little more clear, I'm going to click this button right here in order to shade the faces in the UV editor. So, as you'll see, if I select a face on my object, a face in the UV editor is selected as well. However, this doesn't really seem to match up. This face is really tall and thin, whereas the face that is being selected is a perfect box. This is made more noticeable if I select this long, thin side, and you see, again, it's selecting this perfect box. The reason for this is because Maya still thinks of this object, our cereal box, as the original cube I created to make this box. To fix this, I'm going to have to go back to object mode, and I'm going to have to make some changes. So I'll right click and go back to object mode, and you'll notice that my translates, rotates, and scales have a lot of values in them. If I were to change all of my scales back to one, you'll see that Maya still kind of thinks of my object as a box shape that's just been scaled down. I'll undo that to get it back to the serial box shape. In order to fix that, I need to freeze my transformations. So with the object selected, I'll go to Modify, Freeze Transformations. And now you'll see that all of my numbers are reset. 
You'll also notice that I have a lot of input nodes from when I was creating the object. So to get rid of those, I'll go to Edit, Delete by Type, and History. But my UVs still look the same. So let's see how a texture would align to this object if the object were unwrapped in this way. There's a way we can test that just by clicking this little checkerboard pattern. What this will do is create a temporary checkerboard texture to align to my object. Now you'll notice a few things, like the checkers are kind of stretching vertically, and they're stretching a lot vertically here. You'll also notice some really weird stuff happening inside of the box. The reason for that is because some of these faces have absolutely zero face area. So even though I've selected a whole face, it looks like I've just selected a single edge. So there are a lot of problems with the way this box has been unwrapped. So we're going to have to create a completely new UV unwrapping for this. To do this, we start with one of the presets. Under UVs, you'll see that there's a lot of options on how to unwrap this object. None of these options are going to do the entire job for you. They're really just a way to get a start. So I'll right click on my object and go to object mode. And under UVs, you'll notice that we have a lot of options for how to unwrap this object. If I choose spherical mapping, it will try to wrap the texture of the checkerboard around it as if our object were a sphere. By trying to do that, it ends up unwrapping our current model. And if we look at our model, that's much closer, but there's still a lot of issues, like this little flap that hangs down and some of the overlapping parts of the model. So, so although this is better than what we had before, it's still not very easy to understand. Let's try one of the other unwrapping methods. If we go to UV, we can choose automatic mapping. Automatic mapping is going to do an interesting thing. It's going to project from all six directions, left, right, forward, back, up and down. And it's going to determine if the face of the model is pointing in one of those directions. If it is, it will break that up into its own island of UVs and separate that in our UV editor. So now you'll be able to see that a lot of the textures are lining up pretty well. So now we have all of our polygons broken up into cleaner UVs. However, one of the problems is that it's hard to tell exactly what these shapes represent. For example, this face here, is it the exterior or the interior of the box? Is it turned the right way? Like all of these things are a little bit difficult for us to be able to tell when it's just broken up into individual faces like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this checkerboard just so we can see them a little more clearly. And we're going to start to stitch these pieces back together into UV shells that make sense. So for example, if I select this face, I can tumble around and realize that that is one of the interior faces of the box. And I want that to have a different texture than the outside of the box. So maybe what I could do is group all of the parts that have that same texture together into one UV shell. So you'll notice that I can select sub objects by right clicking in the UV editor. And you'll also notice that I have a couple of extras in here now. I have UV and UV shell. So when we talk about UVs, we're talking about these little dots right here. So let's say I select one of these. It appears that I've selected one vertex, but really I've not. I've just selected one instance of that vertex. There are multiple UVs for each vertex. So if I right click and go to vertex instead and select that vertex, you'll see it also exists up here and right there. So, and even there. So a vertex can have multiple UVs associated with it because we've cut it in two. So I know that's a little bit difficult to understand, but this may make a little more sense when I show you with edges. 
If I select an edge, you'll see that another edge gets highlighted. If I select, let's say, this edge here, you'll see that this edge is not only the edge that aligns with this front face, it's also the edge that aligns with this side face. And so I can stitch those back together. Now there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can go to cut and sew, and I could just say sew. But if I do that, it really messes up what our UVs look like. So instead, I'm going to go to cut and sew and say stitch together. And what that's going to do is it's going to move that UV shell from over here to over here. And now, if I go to UV shell and select that, you'll see that that whole unit is selected now. A lot of the tools that are up here in the UV editor menu can also be found in the UV toolkit. Now I moved mine off to the side on the other screen just to get it out of the way, but this usually pops up when you open up your UV editor. If it doesn't, we can get it back by going to tools, show UV toolkit. And personally, I usually like to take this UV toolkit and sort of drag it on the side of my UV editor to mount it all within this one unit. Now, the reason I do this is because I want to be able to see all of my tools kind of quickly down the side of my screen. And you'll see that cut and sew has the stitch together option as well. We could also cut these apart if we didn't like how our automatic mapping placed them. So if I were to choose this edge, I could also say cut and go to UV shells and now they're separate again but I liked them stitched together. So let's go ahead and stitch those back together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to build the entire exterior of our box. So I'll click this edge and hit stitch together. And then click this edge and hit stitch together. And so now you'll see I have my whole front of my box, but these little tabs are running along the bottom instead of along the top as they are here. So that means I maybe would want to rotate this around 90 degrees. There's a couple of tools that will do that for us a little more easily. They're under transform. And then if I scroll down to rotate, I can click this button a couple of times to rotate it 90 degrees at a time. And so now you'll see that I have most of my UV shell. Um, I don't have the bottom flaps though, like the parts that connect to the bottom. And you'll see if I highlight this edge, it shows this edge being highlighted as well. So let's go ahead and connect those together. And again, I'll do that just by doing stitch together. And at this point, I think I have pretty much everything. Now, I still want to keep these kind of laid out flat. So even though I could sew these edges together, it would mess up the shape of my box. So I still want this to look like it's laid out flat so I'll be able to understand it a little better. The other thing to notice is that even though these tabs have been kind of cut out, they're not actually as tall as they really are in the box. And that's because they were projected kind of at an angle. So I also like to go in here and just grab individual UVs and I can sort of pull these up a little bit to give them a little bit more space for our texture. Now you may be asking, what about all these other pieces up here? If I go to faces and select all of those, you'll see that all of those are the inside of the box. And that part is important, but how it's connected together maybe isn't as important. So I'm going to sort of scale these down just a little bit and place these up in a corner by themselves. People aren't going to see that part of the texture as much, so it needs to maybe not have as much priority placed on it. And we can organize this in whatever way will give us the most space. We're trying to lay out all of these faces in this one little white square here. Now yours may not be white depending on what color you made your object, but we need to place it within the zero to one section of the UVs. So if I select UV shell, I can move this back up to here. And just to give me a little bit more space on this, I'll go ahead and scale this up. 
So now we've laid out our object a little more cleanly. And if I turn on our checkerboard pattern, you'll be able to see that all of the UVs line up on the box pretty cleanly.